So it seems like there will be huge things happening in Avengers 5 with a big crossover and the return of popular legacy characters. But the reason they're doing this is simply because Disney otherwise really doesn't know how to get people to still watch the MCU nowadays, since an ever-growing number of people started noticing a huge drop in the quality of the movies at the same time as there was a big increase in woke identity politics pushed into the projects. Running out of ideas and creativity, Disney, like the rest of Hollywood, realized that if they can't come up with something new and make it popular, they can just use something old that's already popular and just use that to continue making money. That's what they did with Spider-Man No Way Home, probably the only good MCU movie they managed to release since Avengers Endgame. No Way Home was arguably carried by Tobey Maguire's original Spider-Man, Andrew Garfield's Amazing Spider-Man and a bunch of villains from their older Spidey movies. That's how it became the only MCU movie since Avengers Endgame to make over a billion dollars at the worldwide box office and it even went far beyond that and made around 2 billion. But after that nothing changed and the MCU went back to struggling again, with movies like Ant-Man 3, Quantumania becoming the lowest grossing Ant-Man movie while also being the most expensive one with a 200 million dollar budget, not including the marketing and the cut of the money that theaters get. So it likely had a break even point of between 500 to 600 million just to make its costs back, yet it didn't even manage to reach 500. And that, even though Disney and Kevin Feige marketed Ant-Man 3 as a must-see movie and the most important MCU movie since Avengers Endgame. When even the most important movie to the future of the MCU bombs, then that does say quite something about the people's interest in the future of the MCU. That being that the interest is not all that high. The MCU went into a steep downward trend, and nowadays all its projects only range from mediocre to absolute garbage. And obviously they aren't making money in most cases, cause people are realizing that the MCU isn't what it once was. Disney realized that the only thing they put out that actually makes money nowadays are crossover movies and movies that bring back popular legacy characters. So they try to milk that as much as possible now. A well-known insider called My Time to Shine Hello has reported a rough plot outline for Avengers 5 according to which the heroes will fight against the Council of Kangs, but with the Avengers being led by Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man, Hugh Jackman's Wolverine and Ryan Reynolds Deadpool. This just screams desperation to me. Disney is desperate for money. They aren't making money anymore through simply making good movies cause their movies aren't good anymore, so they're now throwing crossovers at us and bring popular legacy characters back that they didn't create to somehow get people's interest in the MCU back. But who can blame audiences for not showing any interest when the future of the MCU looks like we'll be getting more movies that look like the Marvels instead of interesting things. A movie that was once called Captain Marvel 2, before they changed the name for pretty obvious reasons. A desperate attempt to save the movie. The girl power movie about three female characters that probably have a combined total of 10 fans and yet China's already counted in that number. So we got Captain Mary Sue, I mean Captain Marvel, played by the proud sexist Brie Larson. It was her movie that not only released at the height of the MCU's popularity, but also had a hardcore marketing campaign full of lies to get people to watch the movie. The movie released between Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame, and Marvel was pressuring people to watch it by emphasizing how crazy important it is to watch it so you'll be able to understand what's even going on in Endgame. As we know now, that was a big lie just to give people a reason to watch Captain Marvel, and the media was gushing about how it's gonna be the first Marvel movie led by a female superhero and how important and life-changing that will be to women across the world. Forbes writing, Captain Marvel might be Marvel's first female-led film, but it's so much more than just that. The whole media basically was pushing everybody to go and watch it, because it's the first female-led Marvel movie. What a historic milestone. All the while they hoped nobody would notice that that's not even true, cause that achievement belongs to the Daredevil spin-off Elektra from 2003. But Disney and the media acted like that movie doesn't exist, so they could push Captain Marvel and make its release more exciting. And then the movie released to mostly mediocre or even negative leading reviews, but all of Disney's lies and the support of the media paid off in the end and the movie managed to become a success despite the not so positive reception. Now they're trying a different strategy to make the sequel successful once again. They know they can't just call it Captain Marvel 2, cause most people didn't like the first one and they can't even have Captain Marvel in the title cause people didn't like the character. So they renamed the title of the sequel to The Marvels. 
On top of that they threw two more superheroes in there to make it more of a team movie. Cause that already worked with Spider-Man No Way Home, it worked out with Captain America Civil War and it obviously worked out for all four Avengers movies. All six of those movies made well over a billion dollars and were received positively. So why shouldn't it work for the Marvels, right? Disney apparently didn't think about the aspect that the Marvels features three characters that have no fanbase. Captain Marvel is like the most hated MCU character. Miss Marvel only starred in a Disney Plus show that nobody watched. It actually became the Marvel Disney Plus show with the lowest viewership numbers. Statista provides this statistic showcasing the US debut numbers of the MCU Disney Plus shows with most shows performing about the same, just Loki being way up while Miss Marvel is way down there. And then the third woman of the female diversity trio is Monica Rambeau, who's probably even less known than Miss Marvel cause she was only a side character in WandaVision and I highly doubt that people even liked her all that much in the show. With a team like that, character nobody cares about and the people having lost interest in the MCU anyway, I don't think that this movie will save the MCU. I don't even think that it will be financially successful. It's most likely that the movie will flop harder than Ant-Man 3. Especially considering it's apparently one of the most expensive MCU movies ever made with a budget of 275 million dollars. The only three movies being more expensive being the three Avengers sequels. That ridiculously high number shows what confidence Disney has in the movie's success. Confidence that's completely misplaced here. Most of their other movies are failing and yet they bet most of their money on the Marvels. The movie that probably has the worst chances at making much money. But that's the current situation of the MCU. The thing that led to this downfall of the biggest cinematic universe ever is nothing but dumb leadership. Leadership that apparently doesn't care anymore about what happens with the franchise, cause they have their money now and that's all what matters to them. With how things are, the future of the MCU truly doesn't look good. But what do you think? Comment your thoughts on the state of the MCU, the apparent plans for Avengers 5 and the upcoming The Marvels down below. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. Other than that, thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time. Take care.